I am cult leader Gabe, and of course, since it's Friday, you've made it to cult worship. Now, before we get started, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications. It's so easy, and it's going to make you feel good. So let's get on with the show. I don't care, I don't care what they say. The young might not be so dumb after all, and from the young you might even learn. Everybody says you're no good, cause cause you don't do, you don't do like they think you should. Do you expect them to act like you? Do you expect them? You expect to act like them. You expect to see. You expect to fool. See what a fix he's in. Now, today, cult, we're going to be talking about Helter Skelter. It's the true crime novel about the Manson family and the Manson murders. Let's get into some of the particulars. Now, this is probably, if not the best-selling true crime novel of all time, released in 1974, written by Vincent Bugliosi, who was the prosecuting attorney in the Manson trial, and Kurt Gentry, who I believe aided and abetted him in making this a narrative of some sort. Now, cult, before we get too far into our discussion today, let me be real clear. As a cult leader, I agree with no other cult leaders. I do not advocate murder. I do not advocate any of the nastiness that the Manson family per perpetuated here at cult worship. We are only dedicated to worshiping that which we create popular culture. So, if you don't know about Charles Manson, and I feel like you gotta be living under a rock to not know him, Manson was the founder of the Manson, Manson family, which was a loosely knit group of largely females who had flocked to Manson for his beautiful flowing hair and his wise words and his, you know, guitar skill, which we got to listen to a little bit of in the intro. Now, one of the things that Manson liked to do was to send his little toadies out on creepy crawl missions. Now, a creepy crawl is when they would sneak into someone's home and just observe. They wouldn't take anything. They wouldn't hurt anyone. It was just an exercise in watching the way people were when they were alone. As time went on, and Manson's ideology of a coming war of the races where the black man would rise up and take over the white man for his laziness and cruelty only to then be conquered again by the whites led by Charles Manson from a giant English pit in the middle of Death Valley. As that rose to the surface and Manson felt the need to perpetuate this race war because the black man wasn't doing it on its own. Those creepy crawl missions turned into stabby stab missions. Members of the family went to Sharon Tate's house and murdered six people and then to the LaBianca home where they murdered another two. And mind you, these aren't the only murders that the Manson family is suspected of, but these are the ones that Charles Manson was convicted of in this book. Now, Vincent Bugliosi had to face 
lots of trial and error and new ways of detective work, you know, having to get the Los Angeles Police Department and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office to work together in a way that they weren't very good at. He had to control and pry, pry information from them. And that information largely was about how Manson, in spite of his clear lunacy, was also very intent on perpetuating what he called Helter Skelter. Now, Manson is a product of his environment in a lot of ways. Abused by parents, abandoned by father, sent to jail at a young age, sent to prison as well. He talks about how sexual violence and regular violence were constant threats in the world that he lived in. And as a consequence, he wasn't afraid to use those. He had come to terms through his delving into Scientology and the Process Church of the Final Judgment to equate that there is no good and no evil, just what you choose to do. And what you choose to do is the right thing to do because you chose to do it. You dwell within a form of perfection that, of course, Manson can lead you to an even more perfect place. Now, as time went on and the murders were perpetuated, the police were scrambling to find who the killer was. But they didn't realize till deep into the investigation that both the Tate murders and the LaBianca murders were committed by the same group of people. And taking that disparate information and developing the investigation is a large portion of what this book is about. And once Manson is arrested, another large portion of the book is dedicated to Bogliosi putting together the prosecution's case. It's fascinating to see how hearsay and conspiracy and biker gangs and hippies and drug culture and filmmaking all kind of weave their way into this tale. So much of what Manson is responding to with his violence is this sense of entitlement that he should be at the forefront of popular culture. Look at what a great teacher, musician, lover, hair designer. That's a joke. He just had nice hair a lot of the time. But he was convinced that he was this walking embodiment of what it meant to be a great white man who was going to aid the black man in overthrowing those petty, vile, rich bourgeois. And him and his rugged band of misfits would flee into the desert descending into an endless pit, only to rise again triumphant with Manson at the lead. The people in his group were convinced of this. They had bought into it hook, line, and sinker. You can hear it in the interviews with Squeaky and some of the other Manson girls where they talk about how right Manson is. But his deification and his perfection did, in fact, not prevent his arrest. And the trial quickly became the trial of the century. It was long. It was expensive. It was on TV nonstop. This was Satan, the veritable boogeyman, thrown into your face. There were potential connections with David Berkowitz, with the Process Church, with Scientology, with all these cults that had arisen in the 60s to fill the need that organized religion had left open for a youth culture gone fucking awry. Magazines had published his articles, specifically the fear issue from the Process Church. You know, he was championed 
As a hero, there were free Manson buttons on people's lapels. From that side of counterculture, he was seen as revolutionary as opposed to murderous. Because many of the people that long to watch society fall related so much to what Manson had to say, that love is everything, that the choices that you make are the only valid choices, that wealth and excess and luxury were poisoning America and humanity as a whole. And you know who was telling him? Well, the Beatles, of course. The White Album was God's conduit through the British invasion right into Charlie's mind, and only he could tell you why Helter Skelter was necessary. Now, obviously, these concepts, this idea, the whole slew of information that I've just told you is drawn directly from Helter Skelter, and there is infinite amounts of books about Manson that back these ideas up and also refute these ideas. They split the line, saying that maybe Manson didn't believe this, maybe Tex, uh, also named Charles, Tex Wilson was the one who caused it. You know, how were the Beach Boys involved? What had to do with Spawn Ranch and what didn't? There were other people that had gone missing. Did the family murder them? It spirals on and on. But because Manson finally was put in prison, the threat of the boogeyman was gone. Even though the family lived on, in the minds of the masses, the threat was over, and no one concerned themselves with the other crazed violence and debauchery that the Manson family perpetuated. This book digs very deep into this entire story, but from one perspective. Reading other books about it, I feel is essential to understanding the full breadth of the story. Charles Manson was no hero. He was no good guy. He was mad. He said that prison was his home. It was the only place that he felt truly safe. But he also believed in being alive all the way. He didn't want to leave anything behind, nothing on the table. There was nothing that he didn't want to have done because good and evil were constructs. Obviously, Charles Manson has passed now. And the interviews that he gave in his lifetime do not indicate anything cohesive when it comes to a belief system or who he really was. Manson was tortured, violated, humiliated, then ascended to power to perpetuate the same on those around him. Those that he felt were weaker were his subjects. Because once he had been subject to the violence and aggression of those stronger than him. I make no excuses, but so much of American crime history is littered with people who have been pushed and pigeonholed and shoved into the corner until they became what people feared they would become. This is one of the originators of true crime, one of the first fruits, as it were. This genre spins on and on other people suffering in the conviction or capture of those who have perpetuated that suffering as entertainment. It is that life imitating art, imitating life. 
that we talk about in the manifesto. You know, it can be thought of as vile and disgusting because how can you be entertained by someone perpetuating murder against his fellow man? And yet, we watch the false version of it in fiction constantly. There is no hiding behind anything in this book. There is an attempt made to be forthcoming by Bugliosi, or at least it seems as though, to say these are the issues that I had with the investigation, the building of the case, and the conviction, and these are the successes that I had. And past that, very little sensationalism is put into this book. And because of that, I truly appreciate it. It's very informational. Unfortunately, that makes it a bit of a dry read. And it's over 600 pages I really could only accomplish once I listened to it as an audiobook on a road trip. Now, cult, I know that many of you probably love true crime, love this story, have complaints about the way I presented it, but know this. I also love true crime and this story, and the way I feel I presented it, I hope does it at least a bit of fairness. Cult, I would love to know what you think of Helter Skelter, the Manson family, the Manson murders in the comments or on Facebook. You can find us at darkandweird.com to get any information you want and, of course, find things to buy. If you haven't yet, subscribe, like this video, and hit the notification button so you don't miss a single thing. Next week, we'll be talking about Mondo Prestazzoni, I think is how you say it. I'm just going to call it Mondo Pepperoni. A mixtape of truly bizarre performance art. Cult. Understand this. We will always be hated for our interest in the dark and death and the brutal and horrific. We will never be imitated because people truly fear investigating their own hearts. If you never sleep, you'll never die. Dark and weird.